Now a hook has three cables attached to it, as illustrated with alpha equal to 35 degrees. The resultant of these three vo forces is most close to what? So we got three, four options there. But I, I want to ask the question, we're working with two-dimensional coordinates, two-dimensional forces. How many components for one of these forces are we going to have? How many components will each force have? Because we're in a two-dimensional space, each force is going to have two components that we can break down. If we're in a three-dimensional space, then we would have three components. Now, the, the quick and dirty way to figure that out is how many axis, axes are there? We have an X and a Y, which tells us we can only break the force down to the X or to the x axis and the y axis so two now with the uh with this image just dropped onto this two dimensional coordinate system we can go ahead and just drop the whole hook together that just confuses people it could be any shape and it could be look like an s and it would just add confusion but in reality we have one point of application that all of these forces are going towards so we can just drop the whole image all together and, uh, you know, kind of work through the problem from here. So that's what I have done. So now we just need to cycle through each individual force one at a time. So we're going to start with that 100 Newton force that I've highlighted there in red. Kind of grayed out all the other forces because they don't matter at this point. Now the x-axis is going to represent our horizontal component of this force. And to determine this component, we drop a line or we pull a line up directly from the tip of the force to the x-axis. So you see that vertical purple line. Now knowing that this is the line of action and that the sense Again, that's the direction angle. We know that this angle at the origin, as it's defined in the problem statement, is 35 degrees. Now revisiting our trig identities that we went over in a previous cram session, we can identify our x-axis as our adjacent side, so that's A and our force vector as the hypotenuse, which is h. Now the identity that will help us quantify our x-axis component is what? So we have an adjacent side and we have a hypotenuse side. We want the adjacent, that's what we want to define. We know the angle, we know the force, which is h. We don't know a, but the trig identity that we're going to use is the cosine. That's the ka in Sokotoa, adjacent over hypotenuse. Remember Sokotoa, that's everybody's favorite story, I guess, from high school, but it works. We have theta, we have our hypotenuse, that's our force of 100 newtons, and our only unknown variable is our adjacent length or magnitude, and that represents our x component of this 100 newton force. Now to align our sides and theta as the force components and alpha respectively, our illustration changes as shown. So as you see, I changed the adjacent to fx, that's our force component in the x direction, our force or our hypotenuse is our force, that's F. And taking our trig identity, we can now represent our X com force component as follows. Again, that's just Ka, that's cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, where the adjacent is now the force of S, F of X, and our hypotenuse is the force. Rearranging that to isolate our X component force, 
we get a new equation, f times cosine of alpha. Having all this data, we just plug it in. And we find that our force in the x direction, our x direction component of force of the 100 newton force is 81.9 newtons. All right, so let's move on. The y-axis, I highlighted there in yellow, represents the vertical component of the force presented. Now to determine this component, we actually pull sideways a horizontal line from the tip of the force back to the y-axis. Now the line of action remains the same, the sense remains the same. So we know that alpha still equals 35 degrees. So now what do we do? Now there are a couple of things we can do here. We can, first, we can determine what the angle is right here between the force and the y-axis. I denoted that as beta in the green. And use the same trig identity that we just used for the x component of the force. Or we can recognize that the y-axis length, which I just highlighted in black, is equivalent to the length right here in yellow that I pulled to the right. And as long as those are equivalent, we can actually use alpha still. So cleaning this all up, I kind of got rid of everything. This y component can now be defined as the opposite side. O, as we would define it when talking about trigonometry identities. And again, our hypotenuse is still represented by the force. So again, what trig identity are we going to use now? We are going to use sine here. So remember, SOKATOA. Op we have opposite, that's our unknown quantity. We have H defined. We have the hypotenuse defined. We have alpha or theta defined. So because of that, we can use sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Again, let's go ahead and align our sides and theta as the force components and alpha. And our illustration changes as you see there, Fy, that's our y component of the force and the force. And taking our trig, and trig identity, we have sine alpha is equal to F, F, F sub y divided by F. Rearranging that to isolate our Fy component, we have all this data and we get a Fy component of negative 57.4 newtons. Now know here that the force we plugged in was negative value. Why do we do that? Why do we put a negative value for the y value, but we put a positive value for the x value? So it depends on the quadrant we're in. And we're in the fourth quadrant, which means a positive direction for the x and a negative direction for the y so that's important always remember that you need to uh, when breaking down components you got to pay attention to what quadrant you're in all right so now that we have our components defined for the 100 newton force i'm going to go ahead and just bag these components wherever we want on the exam is probably going to be on your little dry erase um, pieces of paper but I created a table up there in the upper right corner if you see right there just put in these values right here because we're gonna need them later on when we go to determine what the resultant of the entire system is